Good morning and welcome to the Morning Outlook Report. I'm Rachel Jones reporting live from Kalkine TV Sydney Studios. Now the Australian share market is likely to open lower this morning. According to the latest SPY futures, the ASX 200 is expected to open 110 points lower. That's 1.5% lower. At the closing bell yesterday, the S&P ASX 200 was 2.1% or 155 points lower at 7,318. That's its biggest fall since the 24th of February last year when the market saw a 3% decline. Now, all the sectors closed in the red yesterday. The sector with the fewest losses was industrials, down 0.7%. The worst performing sector was materials, down 5.1%. The best performing stock was Virgin Money UK. Their shares closed 2.3% higher at $3.09. The worst performing stock was EML Payments. Their shares closed 38.6% lower at $1.67. Now looking to some business news from this morning now and personal lender Plenty has reported record March quarter loan originations of $321.9 million. That's up 87% on the prior corresponding period. January and February loan originations were robust although reflected the usual seasonal impacts. Whilst a new monthly record of $124.6 million in loans was achieved in March. And that was driven by record automotive and personal loan originations. Renewable energy finance originations were impacted throughout the quarter by elevated levels of rainfall in Queensland and New South Wales, which did restrict household solar and battery installations. Moving on, Insira Resources reports demand growth for Balama natural graphite end juices, with global electric vehicle sales up 80% in the first quarter of 2022 versus the first quarter of 2021 to approximately 2 million units. And Chinese anode production increased to above 90 metric kiloton in March this year. Their quarterly report comes just a week after the U.S. government says it will lend up to $145 million to Syrah under a conditional plan to secure battery-grade graphite for American car makers such as Tesla. And the Commonwealth Bank board today announced Catherine Liverstone has decided to retire from the board in August of this year. That's after the finalisation of the financial statements and accounts for this financial year. Well, now we're going to take a very short break. We'll be back with everything you need to know to trade today. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Welcome back. I'm Rachel and you're watching the Morning Outlook Report. Now, U.S. shares fell yesterday with the Nasdaq posting its steepest one-day route since September 2008, while European stocks extended losses for a third session as investors warily awaited U.S. tech earnings and fretted over global growth. The tech-heavy Nasdaq led Wall Street lower, closing its lowest since late 2020. So on Wall Street, the Dow Jones fell 2.4 percent, the S&P 500 dropped 2.8 percent, and the Nasdaq tumbled 3.95 percent. Over in Europe, the stocks 50 fell 1 percent, the FTSE rose 0.1 percent, and the CAC dipped 0.5 percent. The DEX ended 1.2 percent lower. The MSCI World Equity Index fell 13.6 points or 2.03 percent. China's Blue Chip Index fell another 0.8 percent after its worst day in two years on Monday. Meanwhile, investors also eyed the U.S. Federal Reserve meeting next week. Markets have been fretting that an aggressive pace of tightening by the Fed 
could derail the global economy, which has only just started to recover from the pandemic. The European Central Bank will next meet on the 9th of June, and that's where policymakers are expected to put a firm end date on bond buys and also provide clearer guidance on interest rates. All prices rebounded on China's plans to support its economy. Brent crude futures ended up 2.6% at $104.99 US cents a barrel. WTI contracts were up 3.2% at $101.70 a barrel. Spot gold edged up as investors sought a safe haven assets. Gold futures settled up 0.43% at $1,901 US dollars per ounce. Chinese stainless steel futures fell for a second straight session yesterday. That's following a big drop in the prices of its raw material nickel, while poor downstream consumption due to the COVID-19 situation also dented sentiment. Well, that's all from me at the moment. Have a great day trading. Stay tuned for more market updates and economic news live throughout the day. This is Rachel signing off.